Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and today I'm going to show you how to make a reusable dashboard for a personal size binder um, using a laminate pouch and laminator. Um, this is basically the same concept that I use in the reusable dashboard using only the laminate pouch. So let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, because the binder is small, you can use one sheet of laminate to make the pouch. With the sealed side of the pouch to the left, I'm going to cut at six inches. And this is going to be um, the, what holds the pouch. This is going to be to make the pouch and I'm going to cut this down to the size that I need for the pouch. Now this will be a little smaller than the full width of your binder or your regular insert because you need to leave room on the side for the holes to be punched through the laminate. So I usually, I, I think I left about a half of an inch. So being that the inserts are three and three quarters and I need a half an inch for the binder rings, that would leave my pouch at three and a quarter inches wide. So I am going to trim the piece that I'm using for my pouch to three and a quarter inches. And you can go bigger if you want. What will happen is you'll have more overhang on your right hand side. It just depends on how much coverage you want your dashboard to have. Trim that off. Now for the height, the height would remain the same at six and three quarters. You could go a little bigger, being that you're going to trim off a small portion. Totally up to you. I think I went like an eighth of an inch bigger. So then what you do to create your pouch is turn these two pieces of laminate inside out. So the shiny side is on the outside now and the sticky side is on the inside. What you want is to flip these over and put the shiny side on the inside. Okay, and just line those back up. Got little hole punches here. Okay, so you open your pouch, and if you line everything up as you go, it's easier to trim um, because you already have everything pretty much squared in the, to start off with. Um, someone also, I can't remember who it was, but mentioned asked the question: Could you just put the pouch all the way to the top edge? and uh, laminate it that way so that you don't have to trim that off at the top once it's laminated. Yes, you can do that. Um, I'm not going to do that because the laminate is kind of slippery and slides around and I like to give myself some room for errors. <laughs> so I don't have the best laminating machine and sometimes it, it catches on the edge and curls. So anyway, but yeah, if you line everything up squarely when you're putting it together trimming is not such a hassle in the end okay so I've got the pouch in there it's pretty straight I left my extra room on the side for uh, my binder holes and I am ready to run this through the laminator
Okay. So this is what it looks like once it's laminated. Oops. So this is what it looks like once it's laminated and comes out of the laminator. I don't know what happened right there, but that is on the edge, so it will be trimmed off. So now I need to allow a half an inch on the side where I want the binder holes to be, which is going to be here. And then I um, will cut, will trim off the complete top, so I will break the seal by cutting across here which will leave the pocket open and then on the side I will trim about one eighth of an inch out and one eighth of an inch out here being careful not to break this little seal around the edge this is basically just to trim it up to fit so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to go ahead and just take a gel pen if I have one or good thick bold pen and I'm going to line this up on my cut mat I'm going to see if I can put this under here so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing so I'm kind of lining this up so I have this edge lined up on one of the straight lines on the cut mat which is here okay And I'm just going to mark one half inch away from the pouch. Oops. Let's do that again. It's kind of hard trying to show you. Okay. So one half inch away, which would be here. And here and this is just a bold um I don't even know if it is gel I'm pretty sure it is from Dollar Tree <laughs> a bold pen okay so I'm gonna first trim off the edge for my binder holes so let's line that up And I could just wipe that off. I don't have ink on my finger, but um, now I'm going to trim off the top piece, and this is going to break the seal to make the pouch. Just cut slightly inside of the seal. Now I'm just going to trim these edges, the last edges, about an eighth of an inch around. You can do this with a blade. It's really easier to kind of do it with a blade because you can see better. If you put it on a dark surface, I think I cut that crooked. And it's better to trim less than more just in case you need to straighten something up. Don't trim too close to start with if you're not sure because you can always trim a little more off if you are not too close to that seal but once you break the seal it's you can't you're not going to be able to use it so this is what it looks like after the trimming is done and what i do instead of using a corner rounder on these two corners is just take the scissors and kind of do a, a, a manual corner round, I guess, and just kind of trim off those pointy edges. Kind of make it a little rounded with the scissors because I didn't like the way um, the corner rounder actually rounded these corners. It went too far into the pouch. And I just didn't like that look. So I think the scissors work better. And it gets that little sharp point off so you're not stabbing yourself with your um, dashboard 
And then for the binder side, you don't have to do this. I am just think it gives it a nice finished look. I'm doing the one half inch corner round. So there you have it. So what you can do, I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes now. What you can do is take an insert and use that as a guide as of how you want your pocket to fall if that makes any sense and just use a manual hole punch to punch you can just take your oops your pen and mark your holes so that you know where to punch so that's how you can do that if you don't have a hole punch I'm gonna go ahead and do the punch oh. Now I adjusted mine down a little bit. I had it centered, but I think I wanted it more at the bottom. So I, f I think I forgot to show this part. This is your pouch. Okay. So now I'm going to, this is what it looks like. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece of paper to fit in the pocket. I have this Heidi Swap paper that I have not used. I think this is the one. Yeah, this is supposed to be like for notes and stuff. I have another one. Oops. That is more decorative. Yeah, let's use this one. gonna go with this one so basically I'm just going to use my pouch as a guide on this and line it up on the paper and take a pencil and mark where I need to cut so this is where I'll need to cut going horizontally this way and this is where I'll need to cut going vertically this way. So I'll get my cutter out again and trim my paper. Okay, so I've trimmed it up. Let's hope this fits. I'm going to use the black and white side on the front. Just slide this in. If at first it doesn't um, work for you, you can always just trim a little bit off of the piece that you use in the pouch. And this is what it looks like. It's the front and the back. And let's go ahead and put it in. See how it looks. There you have it. And that is how you do a personal size dashboard that is reusable for your personal size binder. Okay, so that's the personal size. Now I'm going to go ahead, let's put this aside, and also do one for A5 or half page binder. And this is a Michaels binder, and as with, I'm not sure um, if their paper is an actual A5 paper or if it's actually half page. 
So let's measure and see. Okay, yes, the Michaels paper is actually a true A5 page. Um, if you would like to make your pouch an actual A5 size, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and stick with making it an actual um, 5 and a half by 8 and a half. I think that makes life a little easier. So for this one, I'm going to need two pouches. Okay. And first, I'm going to go ahead and cut off these rounded corners so that I can work with a completely straight edge. So I'm just going to trim that off. Get rid of those. Okay. So now we have a completely straight edge to measure with. I'm going to make this, the inside pouch will be 5 inches wide. Then eight and a half inches tall, and you might want to, oops, give it an extra eighth of an inch to allow for the portion that you're trimming off. So you could do it eight and five eight inches tall. So again, I'm gonna actually laminate these. Open my pouch, get it ready to go. Just put this underneath so you can kind of see what I'm doing. You take sticky side. This, this is the way it naturally is. Sticky side, sticky side. We're going to flip it inside out and put shiny side, shiny side, sticky side out. Then I'm going to place it as straight as possible in here. This time I'm not using my mat to line it up because I want you to be able to see what it looks like as you put it in the pouch. So let's just hope that it is right and make sure you leave room on whichever side for you to for binder um, ring space. Okay. Now this is one that I probably need something to help me feed the paper through the laminator with. Well, feed the laminate through the laminator with. So I'm just going to use this piece of paper to lift it up. It's a piece of cardstock. And line it up. Have a scotch laminator that's still in the box. I may have to break that one out because I'm having more and more problems with laminate getting bent up in this one like that. Try sending it through again. That might get the wrinkle out. Okay, so sending it through the laminator helped with the wrinkle right there because I really didn't want to start again. Okay, so I'm going to have this be the side where my spine or where the binder holes will go. So I'm going to line, let's put this under here again. I'm going to line that up with the mark on the mat. And again, measure about a half of an inch. From the pocket, that is where I'm going to trim. For the edge of the binder. Then I'm going to just trim the bottom a 
about, let's put this this way, an eighth of an inch away from the bubble. And then again, ooh, that was cutting it close. Then an eighth of an inch from the bubble. Let's give myself a little more room this time. Oh, that's too much. Now this is going to be the top piece and I trim that off completely. So I'm cutting into the bubble. And now we have our pouch. Okay. Again, I'm going to just trim off, kind of manually round those outside edges. And use my crop doll to round the binder edges. So this is what it looks like so far. I'm going to go ahead and mark my holes. This is one of the dividers that actually came with it. So I'm going to use that. Maybe that's not a good idea <laughs> because it's actual A5 size so that means it's a little shorter. So I'm going to use my April printable and line it up where I want the holes to be. Let's just use a regular hole punch this time. These, this really hurts my hands, but let's try it. Very hard work. Let's make sure it's lined up properly. Yes, it is. Okay. Unfortunately, I already punched holes in that, or I would put that in there. But let us just cut a nice piece of pattern paper. Okay, I'm going to use this paper here. That is from this K and Company pad. Um, I was gonna. Oh, <laughs> I was going to try and. Uh, use a printable paper that I have, but I just spent an hour trying to get my um, my color printer to work and I don't know why it's not working today. So right now I'm reinstalling the software. Hopefully that will help. In the meantime, I hope I don't have to get a new printer. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this. So uh, I just feel bad for wasting all that time. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to line this up with the pouch and just put a little tick marks. This is where I would need to cut it horizontally again. This is where I would need to cut it vertically. I'll go ahead and get my cutboard and get to cutting. Put that up. slide this into the pouch it's a little snug no I want to trim a little more off just because it is a little snug and I don't like to have to fight to get the paper in there. Probably cut too much off, but. There we go. It's a little better. Okay, so that's what we have, and let's see 
how it looks. And there you go. Now this one is a little rumpledy because <laughs> my um, laminator kind of got rumpled up. Um, as they as they do get bigger, you can double laminate, mean, meaning put two sheets of laminate on it. It'll make it really heavy and thick. Um, it just depends on what you want. But I think that fits nicely. Turned out real nice. And again, I'll give you another look at the... Um, personal size one that's how that looks Just the other side and of course you can stick other things down in there for decoration or quotes etc and it sounds like my printer might be trying to work now fingers crossed hoping it is anyway so that is it I hope that you could follow along with that and if you have any questions as always please leave them in the comments below and that's it for now thanks for watching and i'll talk to you later bye